Witches and Vampires, The Secrets of Ashbury, is an RPG developed for the Nintendo DS and originally released in Europe in early October of 2010 and was given a US release about a month later. Outside of that little tidbit, it's difficult to find out anything about this game online. While it was featured in an ad in France, it appears under the following slogan. Just for girls. Just for girls. Just for girls. Just for girls. <laughs> Almost all the video content about this game is on my own channel, in the form of a Let's Play. Well, I guess the more important question is if this game that is just for girls is any good. And the answer to that question is that Witches and Vampires is ultimately just an average title, in my opinion. Story-wise, the game is a throwback to the early Final Fantasy games where you need to collect magical MacGuffins in order to save the world. In this case, you need to collect six amulets that contain the power of the greatest vampire to ever live, and destroy them before they can be used to bring him back to life. Of course, along the way, you'll meet a few other characters such as Peter and Jasper. And I will give the game some credit for the twist involving Jasper, since you don't really see it coming. Jasper comes across like Joe Dawson from the Highlander TV series, or Giles from the Buffy the Vampire Slayer TV series. He just seems to be a mentor character that is highly knowledgeable about the amulets, and also dreams of their destruction, while the character of Peter seems far more suspicious, since he is introduced later in the game as a possible romantic interest for Aluna. And if you can't guess the twist, it's that Jasper is evil and wishes to conquer the world by using the power of the amulets. Of course, the party being just as clueless as the player hands the amulets over to Jasper, who then uses them to summon the ultimate vampire to do his bidding. And in like every other game, this plan backfires, resulting in his untimely demise by the force he sought to control. To be honest, the characterization of this game is a bit weak at times, but I do find the character of Aluna to be a strange protagonist to an extent. Aluna is a powerful witch who despises her own powers and wishes to simply be normal, which just seems strange in the face that so many people wish they could have magical or superpowers to either help people or for their own benefit. This desire to be normal instead of extraordinary makes for an interesting character dynamic, but it suffers in my opinion since the game doesn't really explore the idea in my opinion. Outside of Aluna, the rest of the characters tend to feel rather generically good or evil for the most part. I guess one could argue that Ruby and Daryl have some personality quirks, like Daryl being a ladies' man, but considering he's a vampire, that's probably to be expected. While well, Ruby seems to double up as the romantic teenager that dresses like a goth. Witches and Vampires features a turn-based combat system with random and non-random encounters. This fusion of random and non-random encounters is a rather intriguing idea to me, since most games tend to go with one or the other. The random encounters occur whenever you move from one area to the next, while the non-random encounters occur when you come into contact with enemies visible on the screen. Albeit enemies are only visible on the screen in areas that are currently important to the main plot or a side quest. On the plus side, this means it's rather easy to grind for experience and skill points by simply moving back and forth on the boundary of two areas. On the downside, it means you'll see the loading screen an awful lot in this game. Though the real problem with the game has to be the speed of the combat. Battles tend to feel rather long and drawn out since you have to cast each spell by drawing its symbol with the stylus. And while this does make battles feel a bit overly lengthy, I will give them kudos for not being as picky about the drawing of the symbols as, say, Lost Magic. Another issue I take with the combat system is that it's just too easy to win in a lot of places. While some of the tactics you'll rely on in this game are also invoked by the AI, they don't use them anywhere near as effectively as a human player would. If anything, the AI tends to be disappointingly weak when it comes to fighting as a team, allowing the player to dominate the game through the use of synergy. Outside of combat, you can also make potions by finding ingredients by either searching through the sewers, or by collecting them from defeated enemies. But I'll be honest in saying that I find the potion system rather useless, since there is little need to utilize it outside of the few times it's required to progress the main story or complete a side quest. As such, I suggest staying away from it for the most part unless you're a fan of brewing fame and bottling glory. I'd rather stick to blasting my enemies in the next dimension with great balls of fire! Another small minigame is that you can fast travel between areas after a certain point in the game by flying on a broomstick. But this minigame is rather tedious in my opinion, it only grants you a small amount of experience points, an amount that's easily surpassed by running back and forth between two areas in the later chapters. And one final factor to consider in this game is that you have to return to your house to spend your experience and skill points to improve your character. Experience points can be placed in the categories that improve your combat stats, while skill points are utilized to learn new spells or strengthen spells you already know. Sadly, the best means of acquiring skill points isn't unlocked until near the end of the game, and by the time you have access to it, you'll probably have already maxed out most if not all of your skills, making Zarel's training room rather useless.
Visually, the game is a bit of a mixed bag in my opinion. On one hand, the character models and world map are relatively decent, and the effects for the various spells are alright, but the 3D modeling for the flying parts is iffy at best. I'd also argue that the enemy character models are a bit on the weak side as well, since the game just recycles the same enemy sprites repeatedly, while sometimes offering some meaningless palette swaps. In fact, you can probably count the amount of unique enemy sprites in this game, utilizing just your fingers and probably still have a few digits left over. Oddly enough, this game does contain a few voice clips, but those clips are also rather superfluous and unnecessary in my opinion. Hearing the characters shout, yeah, when they defeat an enemy isn't particularly endearing to me and doesn't really add anything to the game. Outside of the poor decision to include meaningless sound bites, the game does feature some decent background music. Witches and Vampires The Secrets of Ashbury is a mixed bag of a game that carries the burn of being advertised as a game, just for girls, just for girls. Just for girls. Whatever. I know. That was terrible. But I can't deny that this game can be fun at times. But definitely needs a kick in the pants in terms of combat speed. As it stands, this game does make for a decent time killer if you have the patience to put it with the slow pace of combat. 